You're listening to the Born and Bred podcast. Available now on all streaming platforms. This podcast is kindly sponsored by the shop Born and Bred, who sell Belfast's finest merchandise and gifts. So if you need any gifts for your mum, your dad, friends, family, or even the wee dog, that's where you need to go. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Born and Bred podcast. Today we're delighted to have another very talented guest with us, singer-songwriter Leah McFall. So Leah, mm-hmm. thanks for coming on the podcast. How thanks are you? having me. I'm absolutely brilliant. How are you? Apart from being freezing. <laughs> absolutely freezing. <laughs> <laughs> Practically wearing my duvet. <laughs> so it's all good. Um, so this podcast is called Born and Bred. So we get guests on and we just talk a little bit about who you are, where you've come from. So uh, where do you come from? Here. <laughs> Not this room. Um, yeah, I come from Carmine, just outside Belfast. And um, yeah, it was a lovely wee childhood. I love to live in a Carmine, full of lots of hills and sheep and stuff. <laughs> and it makes me sound a little bit more country than what it was. But um, yeah, from Carmine. <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of singing then, you yeah, know, when did that start for you? Um... My dad was a singer. He was class. Um, so he would have sung like all round, like weddings and stuff like that. And um, yeah, so listened to him sing a lot. And we were kind of like a wee bit of a, like a Von Trapp family where we all sung and stuff and got asked to sing. All is like church. mom, dad. Yeah, my mom, my dad, my sister. And um, we just, yeah, <laughs> we were just looking back. I'm like, yeah, that is cringe. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we, we loved it. And yeah. Uh, so yeah, I started singing when I was really, really wee. Um, I actually asked for my first solo. I wasn't given it. Um, and I think that's how it. Right, I think yeah. That's how the rest of my career went. <laughs> <laughs> so I was in around six. And uh, yeah, it was in church. And they had a wee solo for somebody. And I don't think anyone else got the addition. Because I was like, I think I'll take it. <laughs> I think I'll take it from here. <laughs> so yeah, loved it. it was, uh, and then I just, yeah. So I sung mostly in church growing up. Like listening to gospel music. My dad's like taste in music was extremely eclectic so we would have grew up like listening to like opera to like rock to like pop to everything in between so I think that kind of influenced um, my voice in many ways which is a bit weird and has lots of different influences um and yeah then just at about 16 started gigging around don't know if you've ever heard of Rotterdam very very lovely little music pub in Belfast um the fact that you didn't even nod uh, <laughs> I was like, poor girl. <laughs> you just I was like, that's definitely in the Netherlands. Like, <laughs> no, these are literally both like this. <laughs> like, didn't even flinch. I was like, no, I was they like, don't it's know. not that place in Holland. Yeah. <laughs> no. I like, I don't want to say in case. I'm just going to say nothing. But yeah, no, so no you pop- don't know it at all. Um, but yeah, <laughs> so I used to. <laughs> Used to start gigging around there, getting lots of little pubs and clubs and stuff. And then I moved over to London whenever I was 20. And that's whenever I like pursued it seriously, um, which was class. Yeah, it was good. It's very broke, but it was good fun. <laughs> <laughs> so you just up and left and just headed off to, to London. Did you have like a plan in place or was it literally, well, I'm just going to go? I knew that like, I knew that for the type of music I wanted to do and was influenced, like there wasn't as much of a scene here for it, which was mm-hmm. like R&B. Uh, like even fused into kind of pop stuff I don't I can't actually speak about that now because I have no clue what the Belfast scene's like now like there there might be that influence there but I know for me like most of the time whenever I was doing a gig and kind of maybe doing quite jazz soul and stuff there wasn't really anybody else doing that kind of stuff so it didn't always maybe fit Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) so I'd be like riffing and then it would be like and and here's a lovely acoustic song and I'm like yeah class this does not fit um but yeah so I think just even genre wise and stuff and to learn from different people and meet up with like maybe like um producers and stuff that were working within that um so but I was so glad for the scene here because like yeah there was just so much so you were, you were able to like gig around and uh you know people actually came to your gigs that was nice mm-hmm. it was a bit, of a, shock. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a shock going over to London and being like oh right sometimes you can get up and sing to literally no one but Billy the barman mm-hmm. <laughs> and Billy was nice but uh, <laughs> but it would have been nice to have more people there yeah. um and yeah it was a different scene in terms of the fact that you paid to like have a gig Oh, like wow, you would have okay. paid like a 50 quid like backline or whatever for your gig to just Billy. So mm-hmm. um, it was definitely, you know, like a lot more competitive. Um, but, yeah, no, I did. I just literally wanted to get up and go just to be near the industry. Um, now, I did study fashion as well, but that was to have my student loan so that I could be there. <laughs> um, <laughs> that worked out all right. Um, but, yeah, and like I would have just went to a lot of open mic nights and stuff and was just surrounded by incredible singers that were like 
backing vocalists and stuff for Jesse J. And if you can harmonize Jesse J's riffs, like <laughs> you're um, pretty phenomenal. So they were incredible and just went to all the different, yeah, open mic nights all around and would have just put my name down and got up and going to say, must have been quite confident. But yeah, I just <laughs> did that a lot um, and started to get gigs and stuff like that, meet different musicians there and build up yeah. a wee bit more of a kind of... Um, a bit more of a following and stuff just as I went along, which was class. Yeah. So, but yeah, no, I did. Just got up and left. Went along. Yeah, there. see, that's what I was going to say. Like, that must take some confidence to just up and leave and go to London of all places. Like, how did yeah. you feel doing that? Um, I just don't know. I feel like sometimes, like, in your 20s, you just are really confident. Yeah, yeah. you just wing yeah. it. You're yeah. happy to wing it. I know I used to, like, hide behind, like, gates of management companies and stuff and wait for somebody to come out from their lunch. Really? And then I snuck in and gave them a demo. <laughs> Unreal. So um, whenever you first went over, like what did that immediate start look like for you? It was like literally, I I mean, like I, I think I, I moved over, first of all, sorry, to Birmingham for a year and then moved down. So I'd already had the big city and then moved down to London. Um, But like, yeah, I think I like the first day I got there must have been like a Saturday and I was at like because it wasn't definitely only over the weekend and I was at an open mic night by the Tuesday. Like I was just so excited to be in that scene, mm -hmm, to be yeah. surrounded by like just so many different singers really more than anything because obviously I don't play an instrument or anything I just wanted to learn from different singers yeah um so yeah I mean I just was so hungry for it so I just wanted to be at like everything going mm -hmm. and uh, meet people and just learn a lot more about what the industry looked like um so yeah I just went to everything yeah mm -hmm. and I guess you hadn't really considered any other path in life other than no. singing really that was no I didn't you. and it was I was so hungry for it I was so determined as well and like clearly just had no self-awareness that I <laughs> <laughs> that I hid behind that's it no, ignorance just, is bliss like <laughs> no and then like I would sneak in give them my demo it was actually Jesse J's manager which is funny because huh. he comes back into my story later on but um yeah like so I was hiding behind the gate waited for someone to come out for lunch then ran in give them my demo and then would email them like every day being like do you like my demo like I just assumed they were listening to it yeah <laughs> yeah left it at the reception and I'm like oh, they're probably present play <laughs> they're jamming right away <laughs> they? <laughs> they have that on repeat <laughs> oh, and they him. will be being like can you stop can you, can you stop emailing us and can you please respect our gate <laughs> did they say that yeah so that was so funny but you do hear that a lot and I've heard a lot of um probably from guests on podcasts you know people who have made it and just at the start they're just so bold and they're yeah. like, what is the worst that can happen? Exactly. They turn around and say leave. no. Um, like, you just have to probably just let your pride go a little bit and yeah. just say, well, I don't care. I'm just going to stick my neck out here and just, you know, pursue something. And yeah, the worst they can do is probably either not respond say no. or yeah. say no. Yeah. Exactly. And you do take hits with the no's. Like, you do feel like, oh my goodness, what if this doesn't happen? Yeah. But then you're still, go you still go back to the fact that it probably will, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so in that fees for you then when you were obviously getting the emails back and they were saying you know mm -hmm. stop emailing like mm -hmm. what did you do next I kept emailing <laughs> yeah I just didn't care yeah I honestly didn't I just kept emailing being like like at some point they're bound I think like we're the generation I, I said that they're assuming you were my generation and you're not you're definitely a lot younger um but like <laughs> do you ever you do you ever remember the rise and the fall of on MTV no you are both looking at me like, oh my goodness <laughs> we're doing the Rotterdam we're doing <laughs> <laughs> it's the fact that both of you actually push your lips before you stick. You go like this. <laughs> That's literally what you mean. No. <laughs> um, so the rise of, and the fall, I think it was. Mm -hmm. um, no, the rise and the rise off, wasn't it? I don't know. Anyways. Yeah, so you just like heard all these stories about like Mariah and like a Chris Aguilera like literally waiting outside gates. So I was like, That's how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> you just like, you hand them your tape like and obviously I had a CD as well which was close to being uh, ancient but yeah so I, don't, I think that's just what I thought you did and that mm -hmm. then eventually it happened if you were persistent enough um, and like that isn't how it happened I had to get smarter I had mm -hmm. to start to think of different ways of doing it um, and that's whenever I started to realise oh I'm going to actually turn to YouTube and like start to try and build up a bit more of a following online and um, and then also listening to singers, like being surrounded by so many singers that are beyond better, like was letting me grow a lot. Mm -hmm. And then I was starting to be like, I need to play with my voice more and try and get something that's a bit more unique and make sounds that aren't kind of heard so that yeah. people are like, well, I've not heard that before. Yeah. I started to like, I knew I could do the whistle, but I wanted to learn how to riff, a lot, riff on it and just different things like that. So then I started to look at YouTube and how I could build up a YouTube following. 
So I would wait for a big singer to drop a single. I'd find out when they were going to do it. Okay. And then so I'd like find out, right, Justin Timberlake's releasing Suit and Tie at 8 p.m. So I'd book <laughs> out a studio room and I would have a beatboxer and like a baritone guitar, like real good bassy guitar, um, electric. And so it was a bit different as well. And then like he would drop the song, he dropped the song and we were like, right, we've one hour to learn it and get it yeah. up there. Like, Brilliant. so you could be one of the top covers, you yeah. know? So then from that, we started to get like a lot more views and then got scouted for the voice from that. So, oh, so it was so. a scouting oh, okay. process. That's where yeah, that yeah. came from. Right. Me, yeah. I feel like we're talking like, about me a lot. He's both moved away. <laughs> <laughs> Back to you. <laughs> you have some more interest. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. This is fascinating. How many gates did uh, you stand out to? <laughs> what demos did you hand in? <laughs> the footballers hand in demos? Well, no, they, that's a thing. Yeah, yeah. Footballers can send in clips. No way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Of you very... like doing tricks and stuff? Um, maybe not. <laughs> Here's me doing oh, yeah. Keep me up. <laughs> Does that not how it works? Did you not have like a YouTube channel? Oh, back in the day tricks? when I was about <laughs> 10 or 11, I used to like always be really early for training. So I'd get my dad to just record me doing like tricks with a ball and put it on YouTube. That's <laughs> class. <laughs> it didn't get me far. <laughs> But, yeah, no, that is that is a common thing. And it, obviously it's a different industry, but people can send in footage and stuff. And, you know, I suppose it's probably different now because there's like scouting reports and all them mm. sorts of things but yeah like old school it was you would send clubs clips of you oh, yeah. like, so like yeah. ronaldo would like he's my only footballer that i know uh, so you <laughs> would <laughs> drop a trick and you'd be like it's be a right bit there, different for for somebody like ronaldo <laughs> <laughs> don't think he needs to send <laughs> footage <laughs> he's forever sending people clips for gonna say <laughs> Stop auditioning, Ronaldo. Oh. <laughs> Very good. Uh, so how did you make it? Yeah. Oh, goodness. Still trying to make it? <laughs> <laughs> no, same. <laughs> but we're all living our dreams. No, oh, yeah. that's it. It's, it's, it's just a process of like, you just don't give up. You give it everything that you have. And so for you, it was like, obviously uni was a means to an end. Same. To pursue. Same way as ball. yourself. Like, you know, you went over to study fashion get a student loan I did exactly the same I signed for Everton but needed university as a means to live there yeah so went to university got the student loan and that gave me a base to be there yeah so I could still obviously chase the dream of trying to become a footballer yeah and we're all loving it we're all student and, loan well that's it debt and <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, it was worth it <laughs> I'm still yeah in student she's still loan. studying I'm still oh, studying <laughs> Don't worry. See. We'll not get on to that though, because it's a really <laughs> sensitive <laughs> subject at the minute. Very good. So it is similar then? You all sent in your re edition tapes? Pretty much. In a yeah, yeah, right way, yeah. yeah. Pretty much. And yeah, just work hard at it. And, and again, it's like who you know a lot of the time mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, if you can build up good connections, obviously having like an agent and stuff will help work on your behalf. But a lot of the time it can just be like right place, right time. Yeah, someone yeah. sees you, someone yeah. kind of picks you up, someone yeah. might be yeah. at your game um, and then you can get a move that way. And, and did you know you always wanted to play football? I don't think like, certainly not growing up early days, it wouldn't have been like, this is a potential career path. Mm-hmm. That yeah. was never something that yeah. we could have seen because there were, there were probably no professionals until I was maybe... Like in my teens? Yeah, it was only like somewhat professionalised in America, but yeah. you didn't really have access to even watch it, so you couldn't even see it. That's mad. Yeah. That's crazy. And you thought the only yeah. way that you could make it was to go to America. Oh, yeah. And that was what I yeah. thought growing up. I was like, I'm going to have to get a scholarship and go to America. Yeah. Like that's the only pathway. And then did for me. you start getting bigger here? Just like, obviously, took it took a long while before it started to even snowball, but as soon as that you know, started to happen. Mm -hmm. Then it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. So obviously when I went across, like I I was probably a little bit different. I always wanted to be one when I was a kid, even Mm -hmm. though the reality wasn't there for it to be professional. I just kind of was hoping one day it would be. Um, But when I signed for Everton, then um, did uni. As soon as I finished uni, it went professional. So like, you know, talk about right place, right time, yeah. having a fit in the door. Like, yeah. I was just really lucky, like, that I was there and that happened for me. Yeah. Because for people now to try and get into it, it's a very different route. Yeah. My route, you don't have to do that anymore. Mm-hmm. But then it's a lot different. You've got to get scouted and yeah, it, yeah. it works a lot differently now. So, but that's a sign of progress. Yeah. And just where it is now and stuff. So, yeah. 
But enough about talking about us. Oh, Here no, the I, guest. Have, I have another question though. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I have two kids. I don't get to talk adult chat. Let's uh, <laughs> keep going. Uh, I usually watch Coco Melon. Um, you don't know what that is. Oh, my goodness. We're um, doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what about being women in football, you know, scenes? <laughs> Do you know the way I know the lingo? <laughs> the lingo. <laughs> well, then we tricks you're doing and all. <laughs> like, no, actually, what about being women in football? Again, like the landscape is changing and has changed massively from when we were growing up. Like I said, you, there was no one to look to. Yeah. Um, I didn't know there was a Northern That's Ireland clash, national team. Sorry, yeah, I <laughs> yeah, but I didn't know that there was a a national team for Northern Ireland. There was at the time, um, but we didn't know when their games were, when they played, you know, who any of the players were, anything like that. And so I didn't, I didn't even know that I could potentially have the opportunity to represent yeah. my country eventually at some stage. Yeah. Um. I played for a boys team. You were the same playing yeah. for a boys team growing up. And yeah. um, I just thought I was starting off. I just thought I'm going to do this forever. Like I'm just going to play with the boys. Yeah. Um, then realized that there was rules that beyond a certain point, you couldn't actually play in a boys league. Mm. So then I was like, where do I go now? Like, what is my next step? Um, so there was nothing really to like bridge the gap between, you know, playing as a junior with boys then I was just stepping straight into a women's senior team at the age of 14. And everybody that I'm playing with is like 25, <laughs> no, 6, 27. Yeah. You know, there was yeah. nothing to bridge the gap. So then you ended up just playing with much older um, girls. And then, I mean, we both stepped into the national team very young. I was 15. I think you were 15 yeah. as well. Um, which doesn't happen now because of the pathway yeah. that there is, you know. Um, so you don't have to play with, 30 year olds when you're 15 unless there's an exceptional talent <laughs> yeah you know and there's a reason why you need to um but yeah so being being a female is definitely um it's definitely changed now that there's yeah. uh, there's actually a pathway and there's a potential career there yeah I think like being a, a young girl now like they have everything yeah, yeah. And we had to figure a lot out for ourselves so yeah I think that shows the biggest change you know yeah, I definitely little, that's so positive yeah, yeah I have a little niece who's playing football now oh, and like stop. He meant to her. she <laughs> she's you know part of a little team and everything oh. already and she's only six and it's just Class. like that's the difference now you know she can go on and be whatever she wants to be yeah but everything's there if she wants to be a footballer you know whereas for us couldn't even find any women's game to watch on tv no you i know. just couldn't do it and now there is one at least one on every weekend oh yeah, yeah it's yeah. everywhere you know, on, Sky, on bbc the coverage is superb yeah but yeah, there's still a long there's still a long way to go in Northern Ireland. Yeah. Um England and America and yeah. the rest of Europe it's kind of progressing at a quicker rate. Mm -hmm. But we're getting there here. Um and certainly like the success of the national team is helping that hopefully. But from a grassroots and a domestic sort of point of view, yeah, Northern Ireland still has a long way to go. Yeah. As it does probably with But it's so exciting. Uh, but it's so exciting <laughs> that it's going in that direction cuz I even did this we um video I do some uh, PR comms work for mental health charity where and I and they do um I t I, we were interviewing just kids like 11 to like 13 year olds on like what do they do to help their mental health mm -hmm. and literally all the girls said football really and I was like do girls play football <laughs> I was like the only game that was available to me like whenever I was younger because I was oh, really sporty really guys sporty. <laughs> it was a toss up between the sports career PA, and yeah. singing <laughs> <laughs> my PE teacher oh my gosh she loved me yeah. <laughs> I was good at everything so. um, I never actually did PE I managed to schedule my singing lesson um, really well <laughs> yeah but anyways yeah they were all saying football and I was just like what that's like totally class because mm -hmm. it is like there's so much like just to know that it's kind of moving in a different direction there's more kind of open to you but yeah I mean it would be my like obviously for me wanting to say to my careers like counsellor called careers counsellor I can't remember in school mm -hmm. what do you want to be and I was like oh, probably a pop star <laughs> like again <laughs> how confident and then <laughs> and they were like yeah it, it just that I have three boxes here and it's teacher doctor or something. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like tick brilliant. other <laughs> yeah no do you know what I have like a very similar experience because I had that in school yeah. I say the story all the time like they asked, they used to go around everyone, what do you want to be? And I said, footballer. And the looks I got, yeah, probably exactly the same as you. Yeah. Yeah. Do you email them now? 
<laughs> just your verified account. <laughs> just nothing else. Just share this account with me. <laughs> Very good. Oh, funny. Funny. Yeah. Anyways, that's class. Yes. So back to the. Yeah, back to you. Yeah, back to you. <laughs> so the voice then, you were scouted for it. Mm-hmm. And so I always thought with those things, it was like just everybody auditions and you just yeah, happen yeah. to randomly like yeah. get picked. Yeah. Because you have a really good backstory or whatever. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this sort of story. I oh, know. No, I like that is for a lot of people. Yeah. So, like, um, you know, you can apply that way too and uh, go through it. But for me, it was because we started to do those videos. Um, and whenever I say we, I had a manager at the time. And then also just always, always been blessed to be surrounded by class musicians, like mm. in every city I've lived in. Um, and London was no different. So, yeah, we put up these YouTube videos and started to get like hundreds of thousands of views from that uh, Universal. They, they're they the record company that own The Voice. So okay. it acts a bit differently than The X Factor. So you've got like, um, I'm assuming you don't know this and then I'm going to really patronize. No, I have no idea. <laughs> I <laughs> don't know. We might know the Wolf. <laughs> might know something <laughs> even if she doesn't know now she's gonna be like mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> watched a lot of documentaries on these things i might know this so <laughs> so like you get like uh record companies and then you get record labels that are like so if you imagine like the record company is like a beach and then you've got lots of umbrellas that's your record labels okay so for um x factor it's owned by psycho mm-hmm. that is a record label within sony right so that's oh, the lost so that means that they only really, they only work on artists that come out of X Factor. So there's this real focus of them mm-hmm. giving them all their attention. Um, whereas Universal as a whole owned um, The Voice. So you come through The Voice and like, you don't really know who your label's going to be. And that label would be working on an artist that's come from organic roots as well as an artist that comes from The Voice. Right. So... Not the best setup in yeah. terms of that's why that whenever I always get asked like oh why do you think like nobody's really being heard of like I think that's why mm. I think it's because there's not a specific label mm-hmm. that is only their only goal is to make artists from the voice do yeah. it. Universal they said to me like oh we really like your voice um but we think it's like Marmite we think people are either gonna love it or they're gonna hate it and I was like oh that's so encouraging. So <laughs> 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 they were like. They were like, so we want to put you on the show because we want to know basically whether or not you're worth us investing in. Um, And I didn't know what to do because I had really grafted. Like I'd Mm -hmm. really, really worked hard. Um, And I just didn't want it to look like. I woke up that day and decided, oh, I might try singing. Mm. Um, And also I wrote songs and was working with producers and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to make a career from you know, singing covers and stuff. And I just didn't know what to do. I didn't know if yeah. it was the right thing. Um, so you really me. had like a good thing kind of going on. It was starting to build, like yeah. But I also saw how competitive the industry, you know, like you really are a small fish in a very, very big yeah. pond. Yeah. Um, and I suppose in many ways, I, I wasn't sure. And I still don't even know now if it was the right decision. Um, But I think I was just kind of like, ultimately, if I use it as an open mic night, so if I literally use it, as a chance to build up my following on social media and then mm-hmm. like literally if once I leave that show um you know that'll be my mm-hmm. my following like that'll be people I can connect with and I can share my music with and people that will hopefully want to come to my gigs and ultimately I can maybe make a career you know yeah. kind of outside of the industry so I just any song they give me as a cover I was like I'm gonna change absolutely everything yeah. <laughs> so that people know I write do you know what I mean um but yeah him and had about it and I decided to go on it actually what I said to them was who's the judges and they were like oh we're not allowed to confirm that and I was like no worries I'm not interested <laughs> and they were like um oh like you know I was just like I need Will to be on it because what's missing from my project is production direction because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I didn't really know how to fuse like kind of the jazz and soul kind of direction that I come into kind of pop stuff. I wasn't sure how to do that. Um, so I needed like a producer to be yeah. part of the project. Um, and I wasn't even sure he would turn or anything like that. Like, because it really is a blind edition. Like, you don't Yeah, know it's all genuine. Anything. Yeah, it's all genuine. It's the most nerve wracking thing you'll ever do. Like, so whenever you apply for it and you support it. <laughs> well, it was, always a, it was always a dream of mine, actually. <laughs> so next year when you're on The Voice. Oh. <laughs> um, but yeah. So went, went for it anyways. And um. Yeah, Jessie turned first. She's an absolute darling. And like, I had watched her on YouTube and all before she blew up. Like, she was one of the people that I just really learned from. Like, so mm-hmm. incredible. So it's obviously amazing to mm-hmm. meet her too. But um, 
Yeah, like, so Will only turned at the end, mm-hmm. like the very end. Mm-hmm. So while I was doing it, I was kind of, what's happening here? Why did I come on here? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he, he turned and then I asked him about that later. I was like, why'd you leave it last? And he's like, it's all about genetics. And I was like, well, it's <laughs> just really nerve wracking. Um, but yeah, anyway, so I don't even know what you asked me. <laughs> I just, just uh, I think just I just said the voice. Yeah. Yeah. The voice. <laughs> cool. Guys, let me take yeah. you back. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it was it was really nerve wracking experience, like for sure. I don't think I've ever felt nerves like it. And oh, it's just so much involved as well. Like you're not in control of your hair or makeup. Yeah. And <laughs> nothing, <laughs> literally. Oh, no, nothing. And like they kind of identified me as like, oh, you, she's the quirky one from the start. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. No, like, <laughs> mm-hmm. what are we going for here? And like, I'd love to blame um, all the outfits that I chose on them, but I can't because <laughs> um, I was like, you know, I was going to fashion school, and you know, I very much was like, I am the quirky one. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> own it. Nobody, yeah, nobody asked me to have a brown fringe and blonde hair that was all on me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but I remember it was because you don't get noticed. You know what I mean? Like, it's the morning of like a show or you're recording, and they're literally like, right, this is what we've got planned for you. Um, and you're knackered because you've been like, you know, rehearsing all the time. And Will had actually started working with me as soon as I got through the live shows. Will had started to work with me. I don't think that was allowed. In fact, I know it wasn't allowed in the <laughs> studio at night. So I was there from like 6 a.m. to like 9 p.m. at um, The Voice. And then Will's car would pick me up and then I would work straight straight through to like 5 a.m. And then go straight what? to The Voice. Seriously? So, yeah. So like I fell asleep on the stage on time. I really fancied Reggie so much. Like, <laughs> so, like, he's the fittest guy ever. <laughs> And he woke me up one time on stage and I'd like drill all over my chin. And I was like, I guess we're not going to do it. <laughs> yeah, so um, it was like, it was so, so intense. But I remember I was so tired. And they were like, oh, so what we've got planned for you? Um, because you're just so quirky. And he's like, um, it's like this like face tattoo. And I was like, <laughs> what? I was like what wow and they were like oh it'll be so cool like and they showed me it was like all this big is this for one of the live shows yeah right this big like face tattoo like in glitter and I was like right and they were like it's so cool and I was like is Mike Tyson cool um, and I was like <laughs> I said like, listen that's that's not Reggie what do you think yeah. of this? <laughs> Reggie Reggie we're just not gonna do it <laughs> so yeah no I was like oh please no um so they went in a different direction and they crimped my hair because I was singing with this like beautiful girl that had a natural afro and she was um stunning and they were like let's make that white Irish girl um match <laughs> <laughs> so they crimped my hair and back it and I was like lovely what's happening first of all they put it in piggy tails oh my goodness you can actually find this photo which um shows you how much I don't care anymore that I'm uh, pointing you to it but um <laughs> They had, oh my goodness, somebody's actually looking at (laughs) (laughs) So they they put my hair in piggy tails, first of all, with like all these like extensions. Like it was the biggest crimped piggy tails you've ever seen. And I texted to my friend and she was like, oh my goodness, what was their reference? It's only Dumbo, like take it out. And then I remember I was on stage and like they told us no press was allowed to come into our rehearsals because Mm. like with no makeup on or you had like one one eye done and like nothing else done. And press did come in. Yeah, so... Will came in and Will was like, um, ah, you look cute. <laughs> and I was like, you listen to me. <laughs> One of us has a voice and clearly it's not mine that's being listened to. So you're going to go back there and you're going to tell them to take these out. <laughs> and he was like, okay. <laughs> but they didn't have enough time to straighten it. So there's just this photo floating around. Like, And every single time there's ever anything, like there was ever anything in the newspaper, for some reason they always oh, whip this. They oh, always oh, pick oh. the worst <laughs> photos. Literally, always. Literally at my funeral, it's got to be that photo <laughs> of my <laughs> piggy tail crimped awful hair. But I still, I still didn't get away with it. It was still crimped. And then they kept on putting like fake eyelashes on my bottom eyelashes so it was just like proper spider vibes like the whole time as well so there was just things like that where you didn't feel comfortable yeah you, know, so you didn't gonna feel say. like you were like you know what I mean and you were just like every single time you got nervous people were like okay so our viewing last week was nine million and you're like class I'm having my worst hair day in front of nine million people yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's like literally awful wow. so there was that kind of like exposure like side to it that mm-hmm. was like you know scary yeah and um, as you were like going through the process were you like I really want to win this now. No, no, never wanted never to win. Never wanted it. No, to win. I didn't, and that sounds. That's the first time I think I've ever said that out loud. Um, and it's a good thing that it's on a podcast. But um, of course, I always said it to my family. But no, I didn't mm. want to win it. Um, it just I really wanted time to work on a record that was gonna be like 
do you know what I mean, music that I wanted to put out there. And I knew that if it did win, like you'd have to put something out pretty quickly and stuff yeah. like that. Um, now obviously it didn't work in my favour anyways because the record I made, they didn't release, um, it got like shelved, which is a class term. Um, but, <laughs> yeah. um, because I mean a lot of artists have experienced that within the industry but like yeah so I didn't I didn't want to win no and I remember standing up on the stage whenever it was like between me and I think it was two others at that point and I was just there like also I didn't I didn't want to do the song that I had sung which was Whitney Houston I Will Always Love You and quite possibly yeah the worst performance I've ever done so I was there like oh please don't make me repeat this awful song <laughs> and like you had to repeat it if you want okay, yeah I was like yeah. um but yeah, like, okay, I don't know. We were such a wee team backstage as well. Like, it wasn't really competitive. Everyone that was there for the same kind of reason of, mm -hmm. like, yeah. building up a wee bit of their own following. So yeah. mm -hmm. everyone, like, and, and Andrea that won it, like, she's, like, she's so funny. Like, she's really? so lovely. Yeah. She was more than Irish as well. So yeah, really, well, like, yeah. You know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, no, I didn't. No, didn't, I don't know. but I don't think I knew there was money. I'm um, prize about my life. I knew that. Maybe it would have been. Maybe changed your tune. Maybe that. I changed your tune. I didn't even know I did that. <laughs> yeah, I would have. Would have actually fought really hard not to sing that song. Um, but yeah, so yeah, no, don't forget it. So do you not get to choose the songs you no, sing at all? I, well, and I fought. <laughs> A lot. Yeah, that would be Over so them. infuriating, surely. I know, but he was right about, I didn't want to sing Loving You because I didn't want to sing Diva songs because I was always like, don't, please don't maybe do that because the first edition song was the one I picked and that was R.I.P. Yeah. because I was like, I like singing songs that I can make yeah. more kind of like, you know, riffs and stuff like that, but don't give me a song that you're never going to sing better than the original person, you know? Mm. And he was like, like, honestly, we're we're not discussing this. Like, you know, need to you need to show them what you can do type thing. Um, so whenever he he picked Love and You and I was like, I really don't want to sing this. And mm -hmm. he was like, Well, you are and you've got a week. <laughs> it's like, okay, class. So I just I had to work with it and like change it a good bit. Um and then there was like a couple of songs that I still maintain I definitely shouldn't have done. But I mean he was right about I Will Survive, which I changed a lot as well. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Love and You and like I Will Survive. Uh, went on to like chart number eight and stuff which was like broke away record and stuff like that at the time so yeah. I mean he, he was oh, he was right about some things he sort of knew what he was doing <laughs> well, a wee bit. you kind <laughs> of would hope that you know <laughs> no, no. so yeah I don't know the whole experience is mad because it does feel like someone else lived it so I mean it was ancient it was ages ago yeah. how long ago was that now I know how long um, is it a, <laughs> I don't know like 30 it was 2013. 20 years, definitely. Yeah. 2013. What's well, right now? That's 10, 10, 10 years. years. Wow. I, I that. I'm very tired. <laughs> <laughs> That's something that we did know. <laughs> we can figure that one out. <laughs> no purse lips over there. <laughs> yeah, I knew that one. I knew that one. <laughs> 10. It's 10. <laughs> very good. Yeah. So it was mad. It was a mad experience. Like, and But I was, I was quite lucky because I never really got... Uh, like I, I saw a lot of people beside me and stuff like that on their social medias that had some like bad things said to them and stuff like that. And I was quite blessed in that way where I didn't really receive that much hate. I mean, you get the odd ones, but some people are funny. See, if you're witty with it, I'm not offended. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you're like, fair play. Yeah, I'm like, well. what? That was good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like one person wrote on it, because uh, you know, I had a brown fridge with blonde hair. They were like, uh, it looks like she wipes her arse with her fringe. And I was like, touche. Fair play. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was funny and dyed it blonde the next day, but I was like, at least you're ready with it. Do you know what I mean? And then some people say weird things. They're like, really class singer. Love her red, love her blah, 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 blah. Her tongue's weird. And then you like go, oh, is it? And then you spend the whole like week going, <laughs> <laughs> but again nothing that like shattered my soul you know yeah I mean? so you were a marmite but most mm -hmm. people it turned out actually like turned out, i know i'm not too sure they even thought that like i think it might have been just a wee bit of let's get her on for some free market and i'm not sure i still don't know like i really don't obviously i sound like i'm in love with the industry um, uh. but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but no i don't really know what that was like uh if if they got their what they were looking for from that but I mean, I got told I was signed before I was on the live shows. Oh, so, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. so okay. I, yeah. That, uh, that was it was going to go that way, and I was with a class label. It just didn't work out mm -hmm. at all because uh, again, you're on a label that aren't like just with um, the voice artist. So I was on the on the same label as Sam Smith, who was just starting up. So it was literally right. at the right. time. I mean, I only heard about him, and it was a small label, so it was literally just kind of me and him type thing. Mm -hmm. Um. And then, like, I went walked over in LA with Will for about a year, and it was class. Like, I got to write with people I dreamed of writing with, like yeah. Toby Gad and stuff, and 
Esther J- Dane and they like write all the big hits for Beyonce and like Rihanna and all. And do you wow. know what I mean? You're just literally, you're in with like the people that you oh, always yeah. kind of dreamed of working with. So mm. it was such a class experience and made a record I absolutely love. Um, but like only me and my mom and my dad will hear. Um, <laughs> so that's mad. Really? But that's it does, crazy. Yeah, it Is that the one that you said was shelved or was that yes. another one? Yeah, right. so there was like 19 songs, but like, I mean, again, like it was just, there's a lot of politics that happens within the industry and it mm-hmm. wasn't really anything that involved me, but it was just couldn't get things signed off or agreed upon um, between like different people involved and stuff like that. So it just gets shelved and you have to like, I'm more into that album more than any ex-boyfriend. Like, so do you not get any say as the artist? No, not, not at, at all. No? no, not at all. Not until you build up some sort of power within the industry, which I'm sure is similar in most industries. Like, mm-hmm. but yeah. What about you? Do you have power? <laughs> 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 Let's talk about all the power that we have in women in our industry. <laughs> no, not, not the time nor the place. Back to you. <laughs> oh, right, <okay. laughs> no, don't, you don't have a lot of power as, a, as an artist that hasn't released anything mm-hmm. like within the industry. Like... And part of that makes sense when I mean, you haven't made them any money. Mm-hmm. They're going to yeah. invest money in you. But also, um, Jesse J said something to me and I don't know if it's right now. Like, I literally don't know because, again, I've been out of kind of like signed industry from like 2014. Um, I went independent after that. But like she said to me, just just she took me on tour with her and she said, darling, like she's so lovely, so supportive of women as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and she was literally like just just guard your heart a bit and she was like because men that know what they want in this industry are seen as artists and women that know what they want in this industry are seen as divas and hard to work with and I was like oh and I I think I kind of thought oh she's had a wee bit of a hard time but that's probably not what I'll experience Mm -hmm. I did experience that like you do experience it not everybody like there's loads of lovely lovely people in the industry but um yeah like you would have just kind of people being like oh she's you know, she's been really hard to work with because I didn't want to wear hot pants. Do you know what I mean? This was yeah. more like an LA. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. you put on the hot pants. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, only Kylie can wear hot pants. <laughs> weren't even cool. I mean, and I they know. wear gold. Like, I literally was like, I'm not, like, honestly, Goodness not me. only am I covering, like, flipping, I will always love you, but Whitney is doing, I'm also going to wear Kylie's hot pants. <laughs> that was like us for the women's fit shorts. <laughs> oh, no. Are they gold? No, no not quite gold. <laughs> Did you spin around? <laughs> whenever you were talking earlier about being styled and stuff, I couldn't help but think about whenever you went to yes. that photo shoot. Were you thinking about that? Exactly well? the I'm same so thing. Sorry. Like it's on a much different scale, right? Like you're saying that you get no say, like in the hair and the makeup and stuff. Yeah. When we go and do like kit launches or whatever, like I'm not a model. I play football. So like I've done quite a few like shoots and stuff and I'm really awkward. Like oh, if they awful. don't So they're used to photographing people who like will model for like just pose. JD and stuff. So they literally, the person taking the photos will just snap, snap, snap. And the people will move and do all yeah, stuff. Yeah. I literally just stand there and I'm like, what do you want me to do? Like <laughs> oh, it's awful, arms folded it? side, like what do you want me to do? <laughs> no. But like I have no say in any of it. So like yeah. they just do what they want with my hair. Like they started putting individual eyelashes on me. Yep. yep. And I'm like, yeah. I'm wearing a football kit, like, before you wear your eyelashes. <laughs> and, like, slicked up hair and all, like, oh, yes. look, nothing like me. Like, you wouldn't even know it's me. And then I'm just standing there like a melon, and I'm like, right, what am I going to do? <laughs> like, so out of my comfort yeah. zone. Like, but That's it, you're totally out of your comfort zone. Yeah. And I couldn't believe I was out of my comfort zone, because, honestly, 14-year-old me was, was like, living for yeah. that. Like, yeah. Yeah. I used to pull back my blinds, like, 14 years old as well, like, we're not talking nine used to pull back my blinds in my living room that literally looked out to about 10 other houses in our development that were all looking like faced into our living room. But I used that as a mirror so that I could dance to NSYNC at 14. <laughs> also, <laughs> as a disclaimer, no, I had not kissed anyone yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Because I was too busy dancing to NSYNC in my living room so that everyone could see me. <laughs> Goodness me. Yeah, like I would have loved that. I would have been like, oh, yes. A video. I hated it. Hated it. I was so uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Whenever you said like a melon, oh my goodness. Literally yeah. like a melon. I just couldn't. I just, everything inside me cringe. I did wonder, was that slightly the Northern Irish thing? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Could be, yeah. We're just not like, I'm so ready enough. to pose. Yeah. Like, it's just it's, awkward. We're just awkward, I feel like. <laughs> it's because our humor is so self deprecating. We yeah. are hilarious. Like, we are so funny. <laughs> like, you're anywhere and you talk to people and you're like, oh, you're so funny, but. We're probably funnier. <laughs> like, yeah. And I don't realize now that didn't sound self deprecating. Yeah. <laughs> Humor is something we feel confident in, but then, like, oh, everything else, you're like, oh, it just, it, my cringe factor is just 
skyrocket <laughs> yeah. in any of those situations. <laughs> situations like just literally want to crawl in a ball. So yeah, I didn't enjoy that either. Mm. No, I did have more say in like hair and makeup. I can't blame it on anyone else. I, I those a lot of what I'm wearing is a hundred percent my fault. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. I just always wanted to regret what I wore because I wanted to look back and be like I wore fun like I have fun yeah my fashion or whatever yeah but it took a lot of fighting to like kind of wear the stuff and now I look at those photos and go mm, were they right like at one stage I wore blue lipstick for a photo and then I'm just like that literally is just joy from friends and that's it and you don't know <laughs> that <another> episode yeah. <laughs> but yeah so I don't even totally believe you do know that episode <laughs> no 100% no, I, I could for, yeah. probably okay. recite all of yeah, you're, you're, the words yeah, yeah, yeah you're really good with I that think stuff I think I said if I was to go on mastermind my chosen topic same. would be friends oh I'd win that's the only thing I know enough about to go on that show same. I know that's it. I know nothing about anything. Like literally anything. <laughs> Only friends fall asleep dead in my ears every night. Like, be like it just yeah, never gets this old line, though. And I I know. Can... Never gets old. It's so good. Yeah. So how how you how did you find moving away? Did you move away as well? So I I did at one point. Um, I moved to Iceland and played there. What? For a while. I love it. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. How long were you there? Um, I was only there for like a year. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Um, and then that's where Michael kind of came into the story so then I didn't go away again okay um, stayed for love <laughs> thing like I'm just imagine where she'd be well I just burped into the microphone so I'm guessing that'll be edited it's <laughs> uh, a lot of editing so even I <laughs> like I said like I always thought I would go to America um, yeah. for university college whatever um, but I ended up picking up a really bad injury whenever I was about 16 and it kept me out of football for close to four years mm. so that was kind of the period where like you either go off and chase it or you don't kind of yeah. thing so um I ended up staying at home for university because I wasn't playing and I wasn't going to be able yeah. to then be picked up by any yeah. clubs or anything and I actually at some point thought I'm never gonna play again Aww. um it's maybe just not meant to be for me yeah. um then thankfully eventually did get back to playing but it was sort of that crucial period like I said where yeah you know you kind of decide what path you want to take um I did then get the opportunity as I was in university to go to Iceland and play for oh, a while good. um and then decided that I wanted to stay at home for Michael Love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I know I don't know where that could have led potentially but I don't obviously regret <laughs> making that decision because of course not you know, know that's a lifetime decision and <laughs> my career is only going to be for however long and um yeah, yeah definitely it's gonna end so and that's the thing like even whenever I was out like in LA for a year with all those people and living those dreams I was so disappointed like which sounds so yeah. lame doesn't it doesn't that sound really ungrateful? Um, but I was because I didn't realize how lonely it was going to be. Like mm -hmm. you'd heard about how lonely it was going to be, mm -hmm. you know, because you hear people talking about it. But you're like, yeah, but I mean, you're still in the studio all the time. Yeah. But I mean, like, I mean, uh, my experience was maybe a bit different because I was waiting a lot for Will to become free because he was working on Britney's album at the time and such and such album, such and such album. And you were just kind of like, flip, like, and oh, I didn't get to meet her, don't worry. I got to see, <laughs> I got to see the back of her head. That's not really one of my stories. <laughs> When I met Brittany, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, like I don't know. I just said uh, you were just sitting in the hotel room a lot, like kind of sitting there going, "I've no mates." Um, yeah, you know, like do you know what I mean? And then like you'd see people's like Instagrams of like your mates out in the pub or whatever back in London yeah. or back home, and you were mm -hmm. just like, "Oh my goodness, am I just gonna be lonely for yeah. a while?" <laughs> like I had kissed someone at that stage. <laughs> 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 you weren't in the hotel room looking out of it. No, no, I had uh, had kissed someone at that stage at the at the age of twenty three. No, I had kissed someone younger. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah. So, but I was like, oh gosh, am I ever going to meet anyone? Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, mm -hmm. in this industry or whatever. Um, I did, by the way, but not in the industry. Yeah, um, but yeah, do you know what I mean? <laughs> I did. That's what it's like. <laughs> I did, guys. So, um, <laughs> love rules. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, like just being away. I was going to ask you though, being like, oh, how did you find though being in Northern Ireland and living away? Being Northern Ireland? What? Being, being Northern, Northern Irish? Ireland. Being Northern Ireland. <laughs> yeah. You being Northern Ireland. Being Northern Irish and like living away. Did you feel like, oh, proud of where I come from? Like, uh, 
well, they never they didn't understand where I was from for a start. So yeah. like obviously I was, cannot yeah. explain it. You yeah. know, they just think Ireland. There was even I lived with um two girls who had pretty much lived in England all their lives. Yeah. And they didn't even understand. Oh, it just... is offensive, isn't it? It's shocking. <laughs> like it is. So like, bad. Yeah. Whenever they ask you how long the train ride is to Northern Ireland and you're like, right, let's chat. Yeah. <laughs> like, and they're like, do you, whenever I say I'm going home, they're like, you driving? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what driving, do you mean no. I'm driving? Like across the sea? I know, I know. I still get that now. Even like people who genuinely know me, like my teammates are like, oh, you driving? Mad. Yeah. No, I'm getting the plane. I know. And even whenever you ask, like, whenever you say, like, oh, I'm just going to call my mom, like, oh, does that, like, cost you a lot to, like, call mom stuff? And you're like, no, guys, we're in the same. Like, you know what I mean? I remember going to coach in America, and the first thing one of the girls asked me, the, the host family that I was staying in, this is only, like, eight years ago, like, do you guys have iPhones? Oh, wow. In, our, in Ireland? <laughs> you stop. Yeah. And you're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, we all not is. <laughs> but um, still playing snake. <laughs> but yeah, the humor thing they they didn't know how to take me. Obviously, yeah. at the start, and you probably thought the same thing. I think eventually they thought that I was really funny and mm -hmm. dry and sarcastic. Mm -hmm. But at the beginning, they just didn't get it. You couldn't communicate that. They thought the way that I spoke and said things was really funny. That's yeah, kind of what they laughed yeah. at. It's whenever they come up and they're like, "Say more." No, yeah. I would like, you know, like say all these words and I'm like, oh, I'm not yeah. this again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I lived with a girl from America, a girl from um, the Netherlands, and then the rest of them were Icelandic, um, mostly. Um, but the, the Icelandic ones, they all spoke amazing English. Yeah. But they just decided that they would speak Icelandic to each other. So you always felt like a real Aww. outsider. Oh, it's a bit mean. Yeah, you just called the foreigner. Oh, lovely. Aww. <laughs> Welcoming. Yeah. It's <laughs> not my experience. <laughs> I only lived in London in America. Didn't live anywhere that was like... No, I'm the same. Well, like there was a different. language barrier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I mean, I had to try and learn Scouse. That's a language. On its okay. <laughs> How'd you get on? Um, To be fair, I picked it up quite okay. quick. I feel like there, we have a connection, though, with yes, like... Yes, I know. Yeah. There's a lot of Irish over there and yeah. stuff, so I didn't really struggle too much. Yeah, and... no. I was the same in London, like, because there's hardly anybody, like... From even London, living in, in London, London. Yeah. 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 so a lot of my mates were Northern Irish or even like Northern or whatever, same humor or Celtic, mm -hmm. so same humor. Um, but I found like Americans just you didn't even try to win them over; they just loved you. The gravitate towards you just literally were like, yeah. "Hey, yeah," and they're like, "Hey, Irish," <laughs> yeah. and you're like, "Yes, love me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you love me, don't you?" <laughs> and they did. It was like, um, they did, but but Will's team, like, cause you know, like we are so self deprecating, and sometimes like it is funny, and sometimes like it's not doing well for our mental health. But like his team took it really, his like whole team took everything I said really seriously, mm -hmm. and they started to set me down in front of these like um like <laughs> like videos that talked about how like you need to speak out what you want and like you need to speak to the universe and tell them what you want. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm probably not going to do that. And <laughs> <laughs> but they, they were literally like, because uh, it just suck the game, you know what I mean? Like they had their own way, like, you know, idea of how you should speak out and stuff. And that was like fine. But they really, really thought that I thought as by, as badly about myself as what I would say. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Because I would be like, oh, large Leah or do you know what I mean? Just like, <laughs> oh, no, I couldn't do that. Who would listen to that? Like, I remember I came in once <laughs> and said to Will, um, oh, like I wrote, I wrote this song. Like, I really, I, I do. Look, it's all right. I, I mean, it's all right. Um, <laughs> it's, it's in the demo form. Like, it's not great. It's not great. It's not great. Um, but would you be up for listening to it? And he's like, um, what are we doing here? Like, he was there, like, he went, what are we doing here? Like, if you're not, if you don't believe in the song, like why should I? Yeah, and that's he, what I'm here he for. He was there, like don't like you, he was like you need to come in. I'm gonna stop doing the accent because it's uh, like, <laughs> <he's> like <laughs> it's debatable. He was like you need to come in and you need to be like this is the best ever song like you're ever gonna hear and you're gonna regret if I don't you know you're gonna regret if I don't press play on this song. You know what I mean? You need which to is what you were doing song. when you were in London. Yeah, yeah. like here's my dad. Yeah. You're like it's not yeah, great. Something shift. It's not great. <laughs> Maybe those comments about my tongue. Maybe like. <laughs> But anyways, yeah, I was just like, oh. so like in America, you had to literally come over and be like, this is the best song you're ever going to hear. And mm -hmm. like, you're literally not believing that and you're wanting mm -hmm. to poke in your mouth. But then if I, <laughs> but then if I did that at home, everyone would be like, I'm not pressing play on that song. Because uh -huh. yeah. most probably that's the worst song I'm ever going to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Which it usually is when someone goes off like that. 
But yeah, it was even just learning the difference of like believing in yourself that much and being able to say it out loud and believing in yourself at home. So 100% not saying it mm, <laughs> yeah. out loud and learning how to like navigate those two two things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So after that year in LA, did you go back to London? Yeah, I did. So I was in LA. Yeah, just just I was like, I wasn't technically living there because I lived in a hotel. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I I think I was only home for like a month or two or something of that year mm-hmm. and then yeah cause I lived in London so I relocated back there because I'd found out on the day that I released my first single um that I had been like dropped from my label so I was like what? um which is a lovely term like I do think this should come up with something better like even just released do you know what I mean it's not so nice yeah it oh, happens in you've football you've been dropped yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah right? released. you're a free agent released? yeah you're free agent or mutual consent they use yeah. that one a lot well, too well mutual consent sounds not nice but um, <laughs> released <laughs> Release is nice. Yeah. Well, I'm going to start saying that. So I got released from my label. Um, yeah, on the day that I uh, found out about, like, the time of the day, the, the release of the song. I was released from the label when I first released my song, um, Home. And so you'd been yeah. with the label for what? Oh, like, not that long. No? You no, know, because we hadn't released any songs from then. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I think, I think it took a year to even get that song out. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, like, I'd barely even worked with them because I'd been over in America. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, so then I was just like having to like go around this radio, like UK tour, being like, like everyone's like, when's the next single coming out? And I'm like, when is it coming out? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so strange. But again, I have a lot of friends in the industry and like I know that this isn't like a big sob story of mine and no other. Do you know what I mean? Like I know mm. how many like incredible artists, way more talented than me, like just have this story as well. But yeah, like, so I was going around this UK tour basically talking all about my incredible album no one was ever going to hear. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, they were like, when is it coming out? And I'm like, soon and very soon. And then like, <laughs> oh, leave and cry. Um, but I remember oh, I was coming back cool. then to Belfast and I was only here for a day. They were flying us back out for, I don't know, Liverpool or something like that tour. And then um, I just was like, do you know what? I haven't got to do a gig at home, like, since at all. And mm-hmm. um, so I tweeted on like... Because like Twitter was. Remember so, like, when you class. did that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I feel like Guys, I'm, like, I'm here. Again. Yeah. yeah. No, it was like checked in. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No. I tweeted me like, oh, I'm, I'm home in Belfast. I think I'm going to do a gig in the in the Empire tonight, like mm-hmm. 8 p.m. or whatever. Like called it Empire. I was like, oh, okay. Because <laughs> um, I wanted to do like downstairs the Empire because I'd always listen to like Ken Haddock on a Sunday night. And yeah. I just thought it'd be so nice to do a gig and actually meet the people supporting. Mm-hmm. And they were like, um, oh, would you be for doing upstairs and I was like no I would never fill upstairs I'll do downstairs and they were like oh okay so then like before I came on like and I'd only it was literally like that afternoon and whenever I came on stage like the guy that was uh, helping me like put it on took me aside and was like this is the amount of people we had to turn away and I was like (laughs) and he was like he was like you should have done upstairs (laughs) I was like oh so but it you know just was able to go out then and like yeah just perform and yeah and you sang like Whatever, like whatever you want to yeah. yeah. I sung songs that were my own. I sung songs from the album that I wasn't allowed to sing. Um, yeah. And I sung like, I think I sung everyone but ho- everything but home. <laughs> <laughs> um, but oh, no, I did, I did. I just did a really weird version of it. But um, <laughs> I did lots of stuff for the voice and lots of covers I'd done before. And like just kind of reminded myself like at home, I love this. Yeah. yeah. The industry's not going to dishearten me from it. You know what I mean? Because, you know, it's like every industry, like, you know what I mean? It, it just it can't steal your joy away from what you love doing. Mm-hmm. So, um, and was yeah. that your mindset at that point of like, I don't know if I want to keep yeah. doing this? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I did go independent, but I waited for my contracts to end because the way like it worked, um, I still had my publishing deal, and it was kind of a weird one. If I released any songs at all, even if they had nothing to do with it, they still would have owned it and stuff like that. And I just didn't want that, so I just kind of waited for like three or four years or something before I could even release any independent crazy, years, yeah. just... it was crazy um I think the, the thing about being on a show as well is that like you know it's not that organic kind of where you know still nobody knows you and it might mm. all be heartbreaking but you can still like take the tube without anybody <laughs> kind of talking to you yeah whereas like I would literally I think like I don't even know why I just didn't even get a taxi like but <laughs> <laughs> God, I would get on the tube and there you know what I mean you'd either have somebody go oh my goodness like what happened? It's like, why are you not singing anymore? And you're like, <laughs> or, or like someone would just take like a photo of you, like always under your chin. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, like, and it was mad because you were just like, what? Like, how does anyone, you know, because obviously you're on the show. It doesn't feel like that many people have watched it or whatever. 
But you do, you get re- you do get there recognized. There was nine million people, like, oh, yeah, probably one or two yeah, of them will be yeah. on the tube. Well, that's it, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. And they would either chat to you or take a wee photo of you. Unflattering. Never, yeah. <laughs> never put a filter on that button. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you were just kind of dealing with all the loveliness that comes with kind of that as well. And, like, a lot of it was so encouraging because people were like, listen, I still follow you. As soon as yeah. you do a gig, I'll be there. And they were. Like, do you know what I mean? Brilliant, like, I yeah. put one on in London. We did an independent tour whenever I met my... Um, husband who's absolutely gorgeous and that's irrelevant to the story but <laughs> yeah he's so handsome find a photo of him yeah, yeah. come on <laughs> he's on my instagram he's lovely um, <laughs> I can't believe he said that was good <clears throat> it gives me room to uh, cough again because I think we're going to edit that out um, <laughs> no it's dead it but yeah, anyway, so um, he helped me put on the tour and like we just like put like ten thousand pounds on our credit cards and we're like, oh, hope people come, and thankfully they did. Otherwise, that would have been a very big mistake. <laughs> um, but yeah, like it meant that we just got to go around independently and meet the people that have been supporting you and like people that had stopped you to be like, here, I'm serious. You know, it's been <laughs> years, mm-hmm. but as soon as you do a gig, I'll be there. And like we sold out like five cities of like a UK tour, which was insane. And like one of them was in like Oslo in London, which was like. I don't even know, 500, 600 people or something, which mm-hmm. is like, good. Like, yeah. Good yeah. Event. Um, and it was class. Like, it was, the best bit of it was doing the meet and greets after, you know, yeah. when you'd get to sit and chat to people and be like, hear, the, hear all the wee stories, hear how this music that you release, that, you know what I mean? You were always hoping for millions and millions and like, of views or whatever, or listens. And, you know, like, I was blessed to get like half a mil in one of my songs, Wolf Den, just hearing how that, like, just met people and like, you know, encouraged them in their own wee journey. And, yeah, that was whenever you were just like, oh, do you know what? I do actually love this. Yeah. And yeah, like the independent side of the industry. I mean, you're broke 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Any money you make from music goes back into it again. Yeah. But um, I suppose then it was just like, oh, I love it. Like, mm-hmm. I do love it. Like, so, yeah. I feel yeah. like you didn't ask me anything about that, but it's just so <laughs> good anyway. But it's kind of like you had that realization of why, I, why you started. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. You kind of like did that. This is why I started this. Yeah, because you know, I genuinely love it. I feel like so many people go through that. I know I certainly did with football. Yeah. Like I went through did a the period. Industry steal it from you for a wee mm-hmm. bit. Well, you know, thing it, yeah. it happens in so many industries where you just get caught up in like yeah. a performance based industry, and yeah. you know, it almost becomes about everything apart from what matters most, which yeah, is the 100%. music or the football or whatever it is. Um, yeah. So it's just yeah, I feel like I've gone through exactly the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you just always have to remember suppose why you started yeah definitely and you also had to wear hot pants so there is really similar <laughs> stories exactly it's <laughs> so similar <laughs> so similar when did they crimp your hair <laughs> haven't had that one yet tell me about your face tattoo <laughs> <laughs> no no definitely and it is just remembering like the first wee solo you had or that first time you did that Ronaldo trick that's it yeah <laughs> you love my football chat so oh, it's, gr- it's great okay. I can tell you really researched yeah <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm too good. <laughs> Literally, unless you're playing football in Coco Mound, like I do. Yeah, no, <laughs> no glue. I'm doing that thing where I pretend I know what she's talking no, about. No, 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 you're so lucky. You don't know what Coco Mound is yet. That's really hard for me to talk about. <laughs> but the reason you do is because you now have. I have two kids, yeah. Two kids. So I met my husband uh, from here. Um, on Bumble, actually. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. I'm on Bumble. I was too embarrassed to put my name, so I was Sally Ann from Japan. No. Worked at Hello Kitty, very witty. Um, <laughs> what? I know. Forgetting that he was that I was home in Northern Ireland for two days, and like nobody gets away with that. Everyone's like, <laughs> my aunt knows you. Do you know what I mean? Yes, like, yeah. So that's pretty much what happened. We were chatting for two days, and he was like, I have something to tell you. And I was like, oh, what is it? And he was like, well, obviously, I know you're not I know Sally Ann. Yeah. Like, he's like, uh, one of my friends played drums for you, blah, blah. And I was like, oh. Oh, hey, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, we were like pen pals for like a month. And then I. But you hadn't him. met before? No, no, we hadn't, no. Um, we were just kind of, yeah, chatting online and stuff. And then um, I was back in London. So I came home for a date. And like his photos were awful. Why do men do that? They can't take, they don't know what how to take it? good Choose photos. Yeah. It's not even taking the photo because they're dreadful that too. Like every photo oh. of me from. <laughs> like, then whenever. Down there. <laughs> See them whenever. Like people know that you're seeing someone and they're like, show me a photo. And, and then you're they're like, all oh, like, but you can't, you can't, <laughs> you can't find one. Let me scroll back. I know. Um, so I didn't really think he was that fit because his photos were awful. And one of them was a selfie of him on the loo. Oh, <laughs> like well. it was that. Yeah, okay. That great of, of photographs. Um, and like, yeah, anyways, I remember I walked into the pub and he was standing there and I texted a friend being like, what? Are you 
he's so fit. <laughs> he did not look this fit in the photos, but he was hilarious that we just got so well. So anyways, yeah, we did it and got married and stuff and had two children. Mm, so Beautiful. Had half. <laughs> yeah, so it is beautiful. Yeah, they're beautiful too. Nova and Judah. And all the way, all this time, are you, had you still, had you stepped away from music? No, I was no. still like, I mean, I still do. Like now I just... And now I don't feel the pressure of having to put out something that I hope does this and does that. Yeah. Now I literally release what I love and what I want to work on within that and season. When you want to do it. Yeah. yeah. So like um, like a recent one that I've done this year, I always grew up, obviously, church gospel music was a big, massive influence. So I wanted to release a worship record and worked with a friend that I'd worked with whenever I was 19, did my first ever EP with him mm-hmm. called Frills and Fur, um, which circle. was like a jazz EP. And like the photographs, hilarious. Like, I look like a little garden gnome in the forest. It was so weird. Um, yeah, Google that. It feels for um, just there's no photo nice of me um anywhere. Uh, but yeah, so I got to work with him again, which was so lovely. Um, and he's a Nathan Jess Grammy nominated. How cool yes. is that? He'd absolutely kill me for mm-hmm. saying that every time I say it. He's just like, why? And I'm like, um, why not? <laughs> so yeah, it was so cool. Uh, just being able to write and work with him and just putting something out where I'm like, I have no like pressure on this yeah. I just love it I'm proud of it and you know I'd wrote a book as well it got released the year before and it was a similar kind of theme running through so it's worked for different bookings I'm doing now and mm-hmm. get to do like book signings and stuff and chat to people again and that's the part oh, that gosh, you love that. you love chatting yeah. to people you don't know that have you not read my book did you not research <laughs> that don't be <laughs> that's <laughs> shocking from Cara <laughs> do what will absolutely forgive you <laughs> don't worry as long as my mum's read it I'm happy to <laughs> <laughs> be offended if she hadn't even picked it up um, no no it's class so yeah just uh, just releasing stuff I love and when like, yeah and you're in control of that yeah totally mm-hmm. but I mean obviously it would be nice to have bigger budgets in things <laughs> yeah um, but I was just honestly like even I, I went to Hillsong over in London and mm-hmm. stuff and mm-hmm. whenever that whole stuff with the industry happened I was within a church that a lot of people like are within the industry and you know they were kind of like you know music video like people videographers or dancers or anything like that and we were able to make class videos and like do such good music for no money like mm-hmm. so yeah you know we were able to do things that was proud of and loved so much like song white x and freckles the two videos for our class mainly because i'm not really in them that much so i love them <laughs> yeah. um but just amazing dancers and stuff so just being surrounded by other creative people mm-hmm. that um are a part of the project and yeah you're just putting out stuff that you love which is so nice yeah um but yeah so and do you like being back to that like sort of gospel music stuff again yeah rather than i do i absolutely love it um i'm not totally sure i fit it because <laughs> i really love riffing and yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh yeah i love performing as well so a lot of what you're you know kind of putting out there you know it's for people to be their own personal kind of worship as well and mm. to like sing along to it and things like that and i love it like i'm it's been so lovely to do it but i'm not sure i'll stay you know predominantly in it um in fact i've got a couple of pro- producer sessions <laughs> lined up that probably aren't within it but i don't know i just feel quite free in it because yeah. i've now done both but a lot of even the stuff i released before like it was based around scripture because that's been my upbringing and I'm yeah. be something that would be an absolute rock for me so especially through the industry that is so hard for your wee heart mental health and character and everything in between um so yeah a lot of my stuff would have been founded within that anyway um but yeah so just I don't know just putting out anything I love and stuff totally winging it um, <laughs> but still managed to kind of do that yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is class so um yeah and just interested to know how that fitted with the industry and like did it fit and did it was it something that you struggled with what the my faith yeah <clears throat> I mean it's re- definitely one of the reasons I said no to hot pants I mean there was, <laughs> <laughs> there was many other reasons uh it was well that said just put, just because it was his stylist that what it is and he was like oh they're, like, they're just annoyed and because like he didn't want anything to do with that he was like, yeah. yeah oh they're just annoyed can you just try them or whatever and I went you put them on <laughs> did and, you? yeah and he was like uh my bum's too big and I went ditto um <laughs> and I was like I'd look like a raw chicken pushed through a sieve I'm not wearing your hot pants <laughs> um but I do I genuinely think like it was just kind of having the like you know lyrics came up and stuff there weren't even good lyrics like and I was yeah. like I'm not singing that like it's not it's not what I'm about at all. And like probably then you do kind of get the vibe where people are maybe thinking you're hard to work with. But I mean, I was like, I got on really well with everyone. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I really made real friendships and like still talk to all those people today. But still, I don't think it would have made a difference at all. I don't think it would have 
any like saying no to that stuff I don't think it would have made me more successful I think it yeah. just would have made me more vulnerable and more yeah. kind of have stuff out there that I'm not proud of you um, want to stay true to who yeah. you are 100% as well, and you need you? to like otherwise I think even you know even meeting people that are at the top like it's just hard like it's hard for them it's a lonely mm-hmm. place to be um, and I know everyone's probably like oh I'm sure they're millions it's nice and comfortable but I mean like I don't know that a lot I don't know it could just be quite lonely and stuff so I think you need to definitely stick to what you know you're you believe in and what's true for you and what brings you strength um and like yeah 100 percent that just faith and knowing who like I believed I was in God and stuff that made me whenever everyone was like oh we're done I still didn't feel mm-hmm. crumb I didn't crumble yeah I yeah do you know what I mean I didn't feel like I was done because I was just like it's not the part of your voice that matters in my life so do you know what I mean so yeah 100 percent. amazing like yeah. definitely but no I'm glad, like I go around kind of sharing that story a lot as well like now it's just now predominantly within churches <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where people don't like, I don't know, don't ask me to have a face tattoo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't ask me to crimp my hair. <laughs> They're just kind of like, oh, I should put lipstick on for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose that, that sort of stuff that you're, you're just talking to there kind of leads in quite nicely to how we tend to end the podcast mm-hmm. um, where we actually ask our guests that can be as suppose cliche or as serious as you, as you want. Um, if you could write yourself a letter or give yourself some advice to the 14 year old you what would you say now? I probably would say pull the blinds and stop dancing dancing <laughs> <laughs> get that first first kiss in a bit sooner um, <laughs> but like other than that <clears throat> I think I would just say don't lose the joy from us and mm-hmm. if you're kind of like you know if you're if you're like feeling the pressure and you're in a situation where you're just feeling like, oh, I just really don't love this anymore. And you're kind of battling that or battling like between like what you want to do and who you know you want to be. There's something within that situation that's not right. Mm-hmm. Um, And I think one of the things that Will even said to me was like, always have a really good team around you. And he was like, if I have someone in my team that whenever I tell them on a night out, I'm really tired. And they're like, oh, I'll stay out because they know they're going to get free drinks whenever mm-hmm. I'm there. He's like they're not in my team like you know what I mean he's like you need the people around you that are going to be like that's not you or you look really tired let's let's just call a night you know that kind of way like so I think it's just keeping those people close that maybe like know who you are and want you to continue to be that as well and then yeah I think it's 100% whatever you know whatever you believe in faith or if there's anything like that or people that you love or anything just hold on to it like as the center like hold on to it so tight you can survive any industry um and just maybe as a wee Northern Irish thing, like, <laughs> yeah. it's totally okay to say when we're good at things. Like, mm-hmm. do you know what I mean? I think, yeah. I, think we think, yeah. I think we think if we say, like, I'm really good at that, everyone's going to be like, oh, like, who do they who think are they you? are? Yeah. And they'll be like, mm, let's grind her. And that, <laughs> that, that does happen. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But I think, like, we think we're cultivating humility by not saying, you know, it's something I'm good at. Mm-hmm. But we're not. We're cultivating insecurity. I genuinely think we need to start saying I'm good at that that's what I'm good at no it doesn't mean every performance I do I'm like that was class no sometimes <laughs> yeah. I go off and go oh my sweet goodness who gave me the microphone <laughs> <laughs> but you know sometimes it's good and I'm like oh that was that was good that went well like I'm good at singing I'm not good at football <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? as long as you're aware of the things you're not good at but um yeah just speaking out like oh no I'm good at that like I think that's mm-hmm. something we can learn from other cultures and it yeah, actually yeah. help our wee uh, mental health and stuff yeah <laughs> Beautiful. Like, what about you? What would you say? Have you already answered that in the last podcast that I listened to? Um, I mean, you, um, <laughs> you mean? <laughs> just like I read your book. Yeah. <laughs> Big fans of each other. <laughs> Love your work. <laughs> Love your work. Respect <laughs> it. Respect <laughs> it. <laughs> I've sunk down this chair. So I'm not no, it happens. It does happen. <laughs> well, uh, no, Leith, honestly, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It's been a real pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, honestly, any time. It's cold, great. but I've had a good time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Morning, Brian. To sign up to our Patreon, visit the link in our bios on our social media pages.